Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Fallout Season 1. I have mixed feelings about this show. I think this is one of those shows people are going to like in general. But I have an issue that started growing on me as the show continued. And by episode 4... I stopped taking notes except for exclamation points because some of the things were just bothering me so much. And I think that's a trend, like a, a habit I have when I do my notes. If, if I'm annoyed and generally, um, you know, getting pulled out of the show, I just watch it and just to get through it, I guess it's just a human thing. In any case, the show is um, an Amazon show. It's uh, created by Graham Wagner, Geneva Robinson, Devorit, based on Bethesda, although I don't think it originally was back in the day. I knew nothing about the show, never seen a trailer, didn't know who was in it, what it was about. I have played the games and I enjoy the games, but that's about all the knowledge I had coming into the show, decided to give season one a chance and oh well. Like I said, it doesn't fit well with me, but I do see it as something people are going to like, the quirkiness and uh, the aspects of the game that are brought forth. I think this might even work for people who just want a fun, weird show that is not something they know about a game. I think people even can enjoy it. But my problems first started with my notes. Okay. All right. So... Uh, going through the cast is a little weird, but I didn't know who was in it, like I said, but I was thrilled, thrilled to see Walton Goggins. I love him as an actor. And then to see Kyle McLaughlin, my hope soared. I was so happy. He two of my favorite actors in a sense. Um, maybe not the most prolific in working, although Walter Goggins has been... Um, more of a newer find, I guess. You know, I know him from, you know, um, the TV show mostly, but he's done some movie stuff. Kyle McLaughlin, come on, I mean, Twin Peaks, and all the show, all the movies he did with, um, director, what's his name? Bucket. Anyway, I'm getting a little sidetracked. So I don't, I didn't and don't care about Lucy. This is the general impression. Before, most of her characteristics are developed. But I kind of like the vault dweller thing. So, but I'll get to that maybe a little bit more. And then right off the bat, before knowing anything about him, I totally disliked Maximus. Before they revealed any plot line or anything, just the general nature of him, you know, I guess that's their storytelling. I don't like him as an actor connected to the series. Um, Ella Pomo as Lucy grew on me a little bit, but Maximus never does. But we got Walter Goggins as the ghoul, or, you know, another problem I have with flashbacks, but you see, um, you know, he's a normal human back in the day, and that's another part of the storyline because it's supposed to be over 200 years after the war. The nukes dropped. It's a post-apocalyptic show, obviously. Fallout, the video game. So those are my initial problems. And when I'm first turned off by the lead protagonist, it's not a good sign. Not a good sign at all. And then the music. I remember the game, but if the music got as annoying as it does in this show, I would have muted the game. It's one thing to draw nostalgia from it and keep it in line with what the game did here and there. But if for me, it's too much. And by episode four, all I kept doing was putting exclamation points. But it did get a little more less aggravating, but still annoying as all hell. It's just fucking stupid, in my opinion. It's one of the worst drawbacks of the show. It's just a relentless fucking assault of stupidity bullshit over and over. 
and there's a, there's one thing to say how loud it is in the background. No, this is always up front, real fucking loud, and I gave no fucks about it because the cool thing aspect about it worked the first time, but not the fucking fiftieth time. I'm I'm just sorry. It's it just one of the most annoying fucking things that went through the show. So. I'm trying to get into episode one and find out what's going on, figuring out what world this is, you know, and I'm inhabiting. And like I said, it just doesn't feel like it was going to be right for me, but I was still in a good zone because, I mean, Kyle McLaughlin's in it and Walton Goggins is in it. And I'm not totally turned off, but I don't like the structure. It, to me, it goes back to like almost a foundation of you got an IP, you're going to make it famous, you want a Game of Thrones type thing, and you're a big company, Amazon, you know, destroying what a Lord of the fucking Rings. And I think that mindset of, even if it's wrong in the mindset, but it's still a, a capital, you know, you're trying to make money and you got an IP and you're going to put the best people on it. Okay, I'll give it that your best intentions are there. But I think it starts a chain of events that lead to bullshit. Back in the day, if this was the Buffy um, push, yeah, the first season or two was a little rocky, but they had 22 episodes after the second season to keep fucking making quality television and course correcting and developing and making arcs out of awesome. So you, there are people who watch Buffy who, Buffy's not even their favorite on the show. But nowadays, when you got these IPs and Halo did this and you want to get things in in a fucking format of eight episodes and don't get me started on the fucking shitty Star Wars bullshit acolyte nonsense, which is really four fucking hours, 30 fucking minute episodes spread over eight episodes. This is almost the same thing, although they're longer and more, you know, fleshed out. You're trying to do all these storylines and then do character development on top of flashbacks which should work because the flashback should you know give you the insight into certain things but it's in my opinion it's done wrong here there's fun to be had in the show and like i said um there are aspects that i think people are gonna like this is just maybe a me thing for instance i love the fucking brotherhood suit looks amazing until it's try until it flies <laughs> just don't do it i don't want to see the fucking it just looks stupid and you've got a novice in the suit which kind of you know gets into um this character fucking learning how to use it but i did like some things like the reveal of who was titus was in the suit and the bullshit that went on on how maximus gets the suit it's like i said this is not a shit fest of the show sucks. I don't understand how it's even blah, blah, blah. It's more like the decisions they make just didn't drive with me. So I've got the cast who I'm not really into except for Walter Goggins and Kyle McLaughlin. Kyle McLaughlin gone right from the beginning. <laughs> and Walton Goggins is a flashback character, a future ghoul. And he kind of holds it together and he's amazing. So there's a bright spot there. But it's not enough of a drawn out and in in depth um dive into characters like there's a reason why angel started on buffy and got his own show why people love to hate spike and these characters didn't appear on every single episode they became part of arcs and things that happened and grew in popularity but again when you've got this mindset of a template oh we've got to do an eight episode series six or 12 or 11 whatever the fuck it is get it all done fine if it works in a production value i get it actors don't age that type thing uh stranger things did it well for the first fucking season but i think it's a foundational issue there's this too much bullshit you're trying to put in trying to make all this work and you're cutting it up in ways that the editing is just in my opinion bad I'm not enjoying the show by episode three. On the first episode, you know, you find out where things are going. As the show progresses by episode three, I'm starting to like the uh, 
the Vault Dweller storyline, but it's barely existent. And when it is, it's drawing away from other things. I don't think video game people understand the nature of the show that they're making based on the game in the sense of, are you trying to make a show for everybody? I don't think that works with these games. You can't just make it generic. And this show at least tries to bring the quirkiness and the outlandishness of a Fallout video game world onto TV. So I'll give them credit. I think the show might be a little bit better than Halo and it and what it set out to do. But for me, it's not grabbing me and it's not gonna it's not gonna hold my attention. They've got the actor you know from lost and a bunch of things and it eventually becomes just a head um and that storyline of getting the head to these people so the girl lucy can get her father back because in the beginning the father is taken and it was so obvious okay maybe it was meant to be obvious that this arranged marriage with another vault because there's three vaults connected and then by the way it's eight episodes they've got to let everybody know what the three vaults are, what the vault society is really doing, what the above ground factions are doing while developing Lucy as a character who's a vault dweller, naive as hell, going out to the real world. And Walter Goggins, the ghoul character, being a human before the bombs drop, an actor figuring out things. And this is eight episodes, granted, some are an hour or whatever. But it's not enough. This needs to be a... Just start fucking com- committing. Make a 22 episode fucking show. Why is that disappeared? Is, is it really that hard? When you want to make... Yeah, Buffy didn't have... Every episode wasn't fucking amazing. But it served a purpose sometimes. And you get these gems that stand out. And win you over. And things you remember forever. The show is forgettable. Despite its attempt at certain gore or elements of the game putting in um you know going overboard here and here in a good way i guess because it is some of the things i enjoy but by episode four to five to six it's just you don't know what the fuck is going on sometimes how the timelines are catching up with the ghoul where is he how in the end of the fucking show is he there and um like the purpose and the character development of who he was to who he is now. It's all not jiving with me. And maybe I could blame this more on editing and, you know, creative showrunner whose vision it is. I mean, to me, you do the first season, you cut out the bullshit, you make it more like the video game. And then the first two episodes of season two are a huge flashback arc storyline to let us know why the ghoul Walter Garden character is such a jerk off now when back in the day he was a you know seemed like a righteous good dude who's a great dad and you know spoiler it's revealed that the wife is the fucking maniac who is looking forward to bombs dropping but again you're by episode six everything's supposed to start settling in and it's it's really not on all cylinders for me yeah again this show's got pretty good use of some practical special effects it's got a a neat way of bringing some of the quirkiness of quirkiness of the game into the show but again on one aspect of the music it's so annoying i was fucking done i'm fucking done but i did make a note that it did lessen not enough that it didn't annoy me but it kind of lessened you know until you get to the episode seven which is titled the radio but again so you're into seven and eight and you're supposed to be ending this thing you you know where the goal is and we're close we're doing this lucy has to bring the head to the people the you know ghoul is on the trail and by the way when it starts off with the ghoul it really doesn't really make sense on all the things until it's revealed that he knows lucy's father because lucy's father's like been cryo sleeping and stuff he's like 200 years old in a sense <sighs> it gets kind of stupid especially when again i'm not really totally into the show these are the moments that are supposed to like win me over and make me go aha 
and you know you get into the last episode oh now we gotta find out lucy's real history with the father kyle mclaughlin's character evil whatever he's not so good and by the way the show is pretty well developing what the um the vault dwellers are really dealing with and that's with the brother and that's the best storyline i liked <laughs> didn't give a fuck about maximus i hated his whole fucking art, actor everything granted if he's a good actor and other things he's not utilized well in the show especially some of the dialogue and that's another mixed bag because in trying to bring some of the game's um, nuance to the show, it comes off as bad dialogue. But I can enjoy some of that because I kind of know what it is. And then it falls flat for certain characters and certain people while putting this uh, in these predicaments that it just doesn't work with their characters. Lucy grew on me a little bit, but by the end, I still didn't really care. Um, you know, but everything is revealed, you know, it's Lucy's mom that's sitting there all decrepit, of course. And the Brotherhood's attacking and your factions aren't really interesting me. Even when they did dive a little into the um, Brotherhood thing, there's that one character who hurts herself, you find out. Who, it's like that whole thing didn't work. It was so uninteresting. I don't know. Maybe the aspect of the game transferring over. Because again, the game, it's a different beast, right? You're walking around, you're going on adventures, and you've got your missions to do. And even if you try to line those things up with what happens in the in the show, like, oh, look, look this is a mission, fine. It's not overloaded with bullshit. You're always in the POV of the character doing certain things, going to cutscenes, you read your files you pick up, or, you know, you see the Coca-Cola, uh, the new Coca-Cola caps and fucking body drink, all these things that happen in the game you do can bring over. But it still has to be a good show that follows something that I can figure out. And maybe this is the formula for the future and, you know, generations will grow up and loving it. I just don't know if I'm still stuck in that nostalgia age. Not only was, like, The Acolyte one of the shittiest shows ever, it was a fucking scam bullshit with 30-something minutes. Carrier Moss is not in there. You know, I want a developer to go, okay, no, I want to do 22-episode fucking season. Actors, we got to work, we got to get everything going. And let's make a fucking... Let's leave a legacy behind, not shoot for the newest ip and make it big and that's what this seems like to me again i don't i talk about this sometimes i don't think people for the most part get hired and go into these things trying to make a bad thing i think there are exceptions where ips are going to be used up so a company will just throw together a shitty movie and put it out to keep the ip and they're looking for the next big thing and which is fine i get it um and it's some of it's in room for me in a sense and the Shannara series, for instance, that might be my favorite books over everything I've ever read. That whole series, and it was ruined by fucking like MTV. But it does nothing to diminish my love for the books and the love of that lore and everything. And uh, although I played the games, I'm not, you know, sitting here with um, tattoos from Fallout on my body or Gears of War or some of the games that really fucking went nuts for back in the day. Um, so I'm not the most ardent, try, you know, biggest fucking Game Boy game fan in that sense, but I did enjoy the games. I liked playing them. I spent so much time in them. And I think that maybe works against the show for me. Let season one be Lucy's story with hints of other things, and let two be, um, maybe Maximus or. Find a better way to have it come across. You want these characters to come together and meet, and then they're gone, and you no, know, they got to meet up again, and things don't. Chemistry doesn't feel fucking right. Uh, one person I like, the 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 I was gonna call them cave dwellers. <laughs> the vault dwellers is the fucking chick who gets her eye fucking popped out, and she's pregnant. She's like one of my favorites in the show. You don't get enough of her. 
that storyline was the only thing that kept me interested was okay how is the vault 33 32 32 31 connected in the way that they are revealed to be and it's this big high stakes meeting back in the day walter goggins is human and he's spying on his wife with a listening device and then it's this play on corporate runs the world and they're like okay well we've got over 100 vaults all over how about when the bombs drop you each get to do whatever the fuck you want and try to build your own society and see who comes out the best it's like okay and it's enjoyable and tying into the brother who's played by the small guy and he always stands out as being small but he to me he has the best character development you can, you can see the gears turning in his head and what's leading to the next thing and admitting to being a coward and and running and hiding so there's a mixed bag and again when you got great things like how good the armor looks some of the effects some of the sh fighting is just garbage feels cheap and unprofessional in, in a way but it, it should lead to the further enjoyment of the show because of, it's what's put out there with the genre and the nostalgia that's there so i'm kind of fine with it in that sense but it's it mounts up because again by episode eight my fucking nerves are ground by this fucking music that's going over and over we've got switching from characters to characters to flashbacks to back to characters and present back to the fucking flashbacks whose character is growing oh is lucy's arc uh, completed now uh what is walter goggins at the ghoul now maximus uh, it doesn't work for me and in, in the payoff at the end but as i said when i started this i got a feeling people are gonna like the show i had this issue with um well maybe more of an issue with game of thrones because by episode three i was done i mean season three i was done i just couldn't take it no more and i could admit that it's a great show <laughs> there's nothing um that i would you know die on a hill for to say why it doesn't jive with me and then i don't like it i just didn't like it it's, it's just that simple and i'm a fucking D, &D nut been playing for th dming for like 30 years playing for th more than fucking god 35 40. so fantasy stuff should be right up my alley but uh, again i hated the books the fucking song of ice and fire books man my ugh. I stopped buying them and my friend kept giving me them to read and i was like oh my god you know this isn't for me but i could see why the show is great why it's loved and why it got destroyed and it fucking imploded at the end because of those assholes but here we are at the beginning of a new ip franchise a video game one done a little bit better than i think halo i think people will like this more for its quirkiness it's a little bit of gore humor um the human element is in the show that's in different aspects which i kind of enjoy it's like saying oh you know what would happen in this part of the world and what would a new society look like in that part of the world what would a new society look like of people who just lived in vaults and built up this um american yaha bullsh bullshit for their uh template and I think it carries over that story, but again, it's so muddled and everything. Um, doesn't work for me and give me those moments where I'm so invested in the show. I'm like nodding my head with a smile on my face. Although again, seeing Kyle McLaughlin set me up for a huge amount of joy in the show. He's just so beloved as an actor for me and Walter Goggins just worked and really got me fired up almost to the point where i didn't care about lucy and i didn't care about fucking maximus to the extent that not only did i know i didn't like them and i didn't think maximus was doing a good job even what they gave him but lucy kind of grew on me it was you know i'm gonna love to see these people in this fucking show and i'm hoping it does great even right now at the end of this i'm hoping the show does amazing but i hope in like a season one buffy type uh star trek next generation 
you can't have rocky starts. You can't have things that could falter. And but because of the template I talked about, it's a it's a hit or miss, and it doesn't seem like there's ever an investment that I can see as a viewer that I'm going to be invested in. It's going to pay off. I don't see it no more. Maybe that's part of my issue with the way television is being done and just how bad certain things have been for me that I've watched. And again, I'm not like a difference would be I'm not angry that I watch Halo season one and two enjoyed some stuff in it, but I'm not going to go rah rah what a great show it is. This show is like that, too. Unlike the fucking Acolyte, which was just fucking some of the most awful shit I've ever ever heard and watched in my life. Although, yeah, it's got lightsabers and whatever. It's just, it was just fucking horrible, terrible. And it, and trying to put it off as something as like an eight-episode show and some of the episodes with credits and stuff are not even like 30 fucking minutes and go fuck yourself. I'm fucking tired of it. Um... So, again, when I came into watching this knowing nothing, not even a trailer, all I knew was based on the game, that was it. I was really interested in, my hopes were up, I was excited seeing Kyle MacLachlan, Walter Goggins, and was ready for this ride of a game that I enjoyed and played. Uh, um, maybe, I don't know if it's like DLC stuff I didn't get, and like the newer stuff, but anyway and playing the original wastelands i'm born in 71 it was a fucking scrolling um game all you did was see information there was no graphics and stuff it, i don't know if people know how far it goes back to that connection but i'm a fan i don't know about the hugest fan but fallout season one is a miss for me but if I'm being neutral, I couldn't, I would invest in it. I could see it should get a season two, fine. Um, you know, see where it goes, maybe structure it in a better way. Because the way they leave it, it looks like it's going to be um, the ghoul, Walter Goggins, and Lucy. Because, spoilers, whatever the fuck, uh, Kyle McLaughlin, the father, gets away at the end, and oh my, it was fucking stupid. But Walter Goggin says, no, we gotta go after him, because he's going to the people that call the shots. Because you find out that sometime after humanity started regaining the surface, the vault dwellers bombed the fucking city. Shady something, whatever the fuck. Ties it into Maximus. So Lucy and the ghoul off, and then you got Maximus. Um... The Brotherhood, newly anointed knight he is. And the whole fucking shit didn't drive with me. But you got the brother in the vault with the fucking crazies there. And you finding out that that system that they're running, the three vault system, is really twisted. And he's stuck in another vault. Which I think the AI brain, because it's the brain of the guy from the meeting. And I got the connection, still fucking stupid. But it is what it is, and I think he recommends to, why don't you f go to sleep, because there's not enough food and shit here for whatever. I think my takeaway is, I like the vault stuff, and could this have been a vault series? With little hints of what's going on about the outside, and that goes back to my thing about season one might have been more of Lucy. You know, season two would have been more of a ghoul or Maximus or whatever. But, you know, you want to do shows like this, you want to pick different storylines to do, you want to be Game of Thrones, which is, I didn't like that fucking show. And yeah, maybe people used to, you know, following different storylines, but for me, they've got to have payoffs at work. They've got to have character development that seems to fit and doesn't pull you out of the show, which this did for me multiple times and the fucking music slow down and calm down with the fucking music we get it uh i didn't know nothing about it but opening the wiki after i finished yeah you gotta fucking compose and he's trying to mimic the 
game stuff and legit music and stuff. Tone it the fuck down. It's fucking headache inducing, vomit inducing bullshit. It's my biggest gripe of the fucking show, I think. It even, dull, like I said, fucking, you know, stuff I'm writing down here. Um, you know, uh, the do ghoul, the, the, the juices, uh, the, what he's got to drink and things like that. By episode four, it's just nothing and fucking exclamation points. And I usually do give shows like a three episode criteria. Although I do it more now as I'm going to watch it just to put up a video. But in my mind, three episodes, you've lost me or won me in a way. Now that is change and you try to be open-minded because shows have you know become captivating and how they adjust and all the, the, the thing the project progresses in a way and you caught back up i can see that happening with this this is not a lost hope for me and again i think it'll be liked by general people uh bringing a certain element of gameplay into the tv show and done better than halo can i say a little bit here and there and maybe some of the dialogue can be seen as bad but carried from the game but in premise it, it could work and does kind of work whereas in halo no you want master chief to shut the fuck up you want his helmet on most of the time you don't want him out of the thing and they said fuck you they're doing their own thing their own timeline and I don't get that from this. Uh, I think this is a little bit more um, in a better groove of things. Although, like I said, I'm not happy where they left it off and where it's going to go. But I'm willing to give it a chance. There are elements that are really good in the show. Characters that I love because you might not have seen them a lot, but Kyle McLaughlin is still alive. Walter Goggins is still on the show as the ghoul. I'm hoping they cut back on the flashbacks or insert them and let them flow better. Again, this show has no real flow to me. When I'm watching old shows like Buffy and things like that, again, there might have been mishaps here and there, but you always felt like you were being carried with it, invested, and it grew and shifted and changed in ways that worked and felt right, if that's a good way to explain it. These changes here, these reveals, these things that flow into another don't drive well with me. You know, characters meeting up for the first time, they get separated, meeting up again, you get separated. All that interplay muddled with flashbacks and exposition and who's this character? What are this, their growth? Oh, let's go back to the vault. Let's go see what's going on here. Oh, but the... The woman with the eye poked out, are they part of this? I don't know. There's a thing going on in the vault. And there's a thing going on with the vault, perception to the outside world. And oh, it's revealed that her mother was part of this other group and she was bombed when the husband, you know, these things could be really interesting, really compelling. I just don't think the show pulls it off in the end with connecting the dots and really hitting that crescendo of season one ended and you know maybe it's tropey and in in what other shows did back in the past and you know watching star trek the next generation season four or five and does it have to connect and eventually you know they did the ds9 passing the torch and passing the torch from ds9 to voyager love love it all but of course we can go through all those seasons and episodes and say oh this one was bad this one's not good but looking back and thinking about where I was in those shows and the immersion I had, it was always there, rarely ever broken. And if it was, it was in a good way. It was when the creators wanted you to feel something. And I feel that's all missed with, with some of these shows. Uh, it's, it's rare for me to say, I guess, but and or like... Why don't the Star Wars people, it's in your own fucking house. Like, look at it, examine it, bring it back to things that matter. You had fucking multiple characters, multiple arcs. If I'm correct, it's like 12 episodes. Why oh, was it 12? Whatever it was. And it was like three episode arcs. And you got invested in, in the characters he's meeting that are different. Even though you had a mainstay 
uh, Skarsgård, I think, you know, who kept things connected with Mon Martha. And it, and it wasn't Star Wars in that sense of lightsabers and flashiness, but it's a good fucking show. So I'm hoping this Fallout can carry over to season two, if we get to season two, and really starts nailing it. Because there's things I like in the show. I want to really start to um, feel really immersed in it and carried through. You know, the episodes didn't feel like that for me. Um, but all in all, I think this is a decent show that could get real good and get much better. And I'm not surprised if people love it as it is. And I'm just the outlier who's kind of, you know, set in his ways and just really looking for things that it's not practical to look for these days. But certain things I think should still stay the same. And whether it be quality and dialogue and storytelling to even if you're going to mix up things and do flashbacks and stuff, try to make it a little bit more compelling and fit better. And I guess that's all I'll say for this. Um, I guess I, I recommend people watch Fallout. Yeah, it's not a horrible show, and I think it could have potential to be much better and, and grow on me more. Tone it down with the fucking music, though. So keep it like that. All right, so I hope everybody's doing well. My best to you and yours. Take care.